I think, yes, okay, now it works. Sorry, there was some problem with the mapping of the various inputs and outputs. As it turns out, the update to Windows 21 H1 seems to be not going very well for me, and but it's causing a little bit of trouble with the audio. So essentially, every time I come back from sleep on this computer, the audio is messed up. Um, and I forgot to reset it over here. Hopefully it's going to be fixed soon. Um, oh, and it didn't actually update, by the way. Like, it's just every time I try to update, it fails as well. So there is a little bit going on on that one. Uh, where were we? Um, so last week, I think... Yeah, you probably heard me yelp last week. Um, let's do a little bit of a summary over this. I have a half-written blog post that I'm going to post sometimes in June, hopefully when I have a little more details about all of this. And it is um, talking about all the various problems around this particular glucometer. Also, if you hear a beep, it's fine. It's just my glucometer. There we are. Uh, and that's why I did say glucometer. I was not meaning to say glucometer. I was going to say aircon. Um, and glucometer is fine. Aircon. So, um, the LG control panel that I have over here is talking to the LG HVAC unit over a 12 volt bus, um, high dominant, low, sorry, high recessive, low dominant bus using a 104 BPS. So fairly low um, serial protocol, bidirectional, because as it turns out, the control panel talks to the HVAC and the HVAC replies back. The other thing with this is the, the protocol is a bit strange in the sense of it's very similar to, but not identical um, to a bunch of other protocols that LG uses in other HVAC systems, even with the same control panel. But more interesting, last time when I did the stream, I found that there are a bunch of settings <coughs> that the control panel will accept, but it will not accept if I actually connect to the current like, HVAC unit. And so I theorized that what's, what's going on is at the beginning of the connection, the control panel is actually asking the HVAC, hey, what are your capabilities? And the control panel replies, like, these are my capabilities. And after it does that, the control panel will actually allow a bunch of things to pretty much work. Or rather not work, because it seems to like accept everything to begin with, and then it reduces only when it gets the right capability. Um, and I have a recording of that capability right now. Oh, I just realized I forgot to grab the volume. Give me just a second. We will need the Logic Pro, and I will be analyzing this live, so let me grab that from there. Um, unlike the last stream, I'm not going to use a camera this time around for two reasons. The first is that it's just not interesting, um, and the second is it was a pain to set it up and to get it to work. I don't really want to waste time on that this week, because as I said, there is not really much point in that. Um, most of what I'm going to be doing tonight is going to be doing directly on the computer, and so you'll see most of what is happening. Um, so let me start for a moment. So this is where we were last time. Uh, I don't care about RST right now. So this is where we were last time. This is an emulator. Do I have a VM here? I do have it. Close this and then I don't understand this, but like this has to be a bug somewhere in uh, um, Visual Studio Code because it when I open the folder and connect to it, it opens terminal and doesn't have the end, and then I close the terminal, reopen it, it has the end. So anyway, it works. Um, so this is supposedly a good emulator um, for the LG HVAC. It will well, right now it does one thing and one thing only. 
it sends this command over here, or rather this reply over here, whatever the command from the actual RG thingy arrives. But not quite what I want. I want this to be a little bit smarter than that. So let's start for a moment with analyzing. Um, oh, I forgot. I was saying earlier, um, in the last stream, I also yelled. Um, not in the sense of look for a restaurant on an online review site, among other things, because I'm not going to restaurants right now and I'm not going to, like, I'm not planning to be like anytime soon. Like, yeah, like, restaurants is not the thing. Um, that's not the reason why the whole thing is there. So let me close a few things here. Um, what happened was cable making sure all the cables are connected. Um, what happened was I was using an MCP uh, 2021. Um, an MCP 2021. So let me actually open that. This is the one that 2021 330 um, ESN. which is a link bus and a transceiver, exactly like I wanted. And it works fine, but it also has a VRAM. I also love that this has a maximum baud rate, but not a minimum one. The other one that does have a minimum, it's not actually listed as a minimum one, but that's a different problem. Um, so if you look at this thing over here, it, I love the private video as well. It has a built-in voltage regulator. Um, which allows 3.3 to 5 um, volt out of the device, which is handy if you are just powering something that is very small and doesn't need a lot of power. Say an 8051, um, it will be fine to power that out with 50 milliampere, that's perfectly reasonable if that's what you're looking for, but also, unfortunately, that's not what I'm trying to do. Like, I cannot actually power up my um, ESP32 out of the 50 milliampere that this thing um, regulates, so I have my own back uh, converter in, on the not yet done um, board. What I wanted to do was, I just for now use it with the serial port. If I didn't connect the 3 volt power supply of the regulator together with one from, uh, with the one coming from the USB serial adapter, it was just too noisy and I couldn't actually get a good synchronization. So what I ended up doing instead was like I tied them together, which kind of worked, except that at first I was on the 5 volts, but then I was 3.3 volts. It went into short circuit protection, works fine, but it was hot as heck, and I think I kind of burned the thing a little bit. You can actually see the, the um, the, the, the color changed on the um, laser engraved text on top, which will be funny. So what I ended up doing was looking for a new alternative uh, bus transceiver for this. And there are a few, but not that many. So if you look to something like VGKey, you can look for bus for lean bus transceivers. So if you look for bus transceivers, um, you'll find all the bus transceivers. Or not, oh, that's actually all. Yeah, drivers, receivers, transceivers, um, interface. Yeah, there are buffers as well, and I was not looking for those. And so on this thing, technically, it should be ISO 9141, which is this one. It also has probably a J name or something, but like you select these three, these are all lean buses. Um, and if you then go for in stock and active, like you, you go down to 120 different transceivers. But if you see that the whole first page is the MCP ones, by the way, when you go for unit price, the cheapest ones, okay, the cheap one is not actually 
because you need to order 5,000 of these. And I'm not going to order 5,000 of them. Um, the next one is the MCP 2003, which has a minimum speed, but it doesn't work for me. Then you get to this T-Lean 2021, which funny enough, I didn't realize this one is 2021. It's probably, um, I haven't even checked this one because it has minimum quantities of 3,000. But I assume that it is actually looking a lot like the 2021 um, from the Microsoft one. I don't see the data sheet for this one either, so who knows. Um, you see the various MCPs, and then you see this one from own semiconductor, which is now available, damn it. So the, oh no, sorry, now I remember why. No, I didn't. This one is from the own semiconductor, it is available, but it is also horribly for a surface mount. I cannot actually solder this myself, yes. I could try, but it's not going to work. So if I avoid those and I just go for the package and, and go for 8P, 8PD, 8 so, uh, 8SOIC and the 13 because they're still fine. I don't remember the T-Soft, is the T-Soft hand solderable? Technically it is, so I can also select that one. It's not easy, but you can still solder it, so... And I don't remember the H song. <sighs> no, 8 H song. I don't want JSON, I want 8 H song. Yeah, this one is not hand stub. Arguable. I will consider it not hand solderable. So if I apply the filter to just get the ones that I can solder by hand, which is these, it's only half of them. Um, these are all the microchip MCP. The first one that is currently available is this one, which is the one I ordered, as it turned out. Um, there is also this one. Oh, now I have four available images um, from ON Semiconductor. Now, the good thing, if you look at the one from ON, on the data sheet, Is it no? This has the out. Okay, this one is with the integrated. Yeah, this one four twenty eight actually has the regulator as well. I guess because I asked for available, it's not showing me the other one from on semiconductor, which is the twenty seven. Um. So anyway, I went for this one, which is the um, TI, and it should be working fine as far as I can tell. But I haven't tried it yet, so that's going to be what we're going to try now. Um, so that's one part of the thing. I ordered this one, I ordered this on adapter board so I could mount this on the breadboard. I haven't tried it yet, whether it works or not, so that's going to be the next step. Um, the other step after that is figuring out if it actually can support the low speed because there is no reference to a timeout on this thing. But also, I'm not sure if that's going to be working. Also, I just realized May I have put it the wrong way around on my breadboard, so let me go and check that. So, the annoying part is that I couldn't tell where the dot was on the actual package when I soldered it. Assuming I sold it the right size, uh, the right side, the lean bus it's all on the upper part for me, and the RXDX is on the bottom side of it. Eight is not connected and neither is free. I need to remove this orange connection then. Okay, it's completely connected here. And 
seven is this. Yes. Okay. They should be connected now the right way. Um, to make it easier for myself, I also made a couple of changes, and instead of powering up the whole thing from the from the panel cable, which is what I used to do before, I decided to power it up on the same breadboard, but from like an actual cable there. And then I'm going to just power the panel up from the same breadboard. So that means that the power to the um, LG thingy actually goes through the breadboard. Technically, that also would allow me to measure it, but I don't care to do that. But before I do anything, the next step is just to turn this on and make sure the thing doesn't just burn in smoke because I wired it wrong. It's on, it's 12 volts, uh, it's consuming currently 0 milliampere, so there's nothing going on there. It's not hot, so probably I didn't burn it. Um, let's go and try if it works. So this is, oh, let me go back to analyzer. No, I'm going to be using the first three digital channels. So that's 3.3. I don't think I can lower this further. I can, technically. I can, just in case. It will make things a little faster for me. Um, so I'm going to do this with those three channels. Okay, if I start these, they're all low right now. Oh, because this is not master. So, stop. I need to make this master. And I lost the. Oh no, here it is. I, I was afraid I lost the resistor that I used before to make this master. So to make this master, the, I just need to put a resistor between the 12 volts and ground. There we go. Sorry, 12 volts and the pass, not ground. So now it should be master. Yes, there you go. Um, or leader. So channel 0 is now high, channel 1 and channel 2 are both low. Um, but it's actually curious. Because I expected one of them to be high. Right? Oh, because I'm, it's a pull-up and the pull-up resistor is not connected. So, next step with that is I'm going to connect the USB serial adapter based on the CH341 and that brings channel 2 high which is correct because channel 2 is then connected to pin 4 which is TXD um, TXT is high and that part is fine. But then I will be expecting pin 1, which is RXT, which should be channel 2 to also be high and it isn't. Okay, so that's interesting. Is correct, that is correct. So I expected this to be high. Okay, so we have a problem here. I... This should be pulled high, and it isn't. If I now disconnect the 12 volts, channel 
channel 1 is still held low and I expect it to go high to Neha short if I remove okay now I remove channel 1 and it's high so the orange connection which is RXD it is high it pulled high which is correct Uh, yeah, sorry, my computer decided to go there, there. So this is high, so that is correct. That is perfectly fine. That's what it should be doing. But if I connect this to the transceiver, it stays low. And since low is dominant, like it's an open drain, it's not high. I unplug this either this transceiver also doesn't work for me or I just miss it Solder bit. Let's flip this out for a moment. Did I reverse this? And that would explain why things are not working. So this Zoic package doesn't actually have a dot, it has a line. So I align the line with number one, but now what I expect to be number one appears to be number five. Does that make any sense? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Um, the package on this data sheet, it says that it should be on the dot, but it, oh, there you go, packaging material. That's the recommended footprint, that's not what I want. So let's. This is the tape and real dimension. That's tape dimension. I'm not for which version, anyway. Quadrant assignment for pin one orientation in tape. The sprockets are there. And for the soic. The pin one quadrant is in quadrant two. Like this is what it says. So this is these are the quadrant, and this is the no quadrant one. What's a soic package pro in D pins eight pin one quadrant one. Okay, 
right, so if that's the case, that one should be king one. Okay. Like I may have a four. Or I may have burnt it. Just give me a moment. Okay, let me give this a bit of a clean. There may be some flux residue on it because I just soldered it earlier, right? And if that is not a problem, I may have to solder a new one. It'll be fun to do on the spot and not going to film it because I'm not that adventurous. I'm going to turn it into a AMA big lifestyle if anybody has questions in that case. see again so quadrant one which means it's the bottom of the line should be king one doesn't quite beep but it shows continuity so which one does it connect to number one of this one It doesn't connect, I may need to solder a new one. That's why I bought a number of the boards, um, the adapter boards. Let me just check how this should look like. So, if this is the case, oh, I may have put it wrong. Let's see. So which one should be king one? Yeah. Yeah, I probably put it wrong because Yeah, I saw that it the wrong way. Awesome. I'll solder a new one. I can probably recover that one by desoldering it later, but I'm not going to try that because it's going to take me more time than soldering a new one over here. Let me just move a few things around. This works fine with a PS100, so I'm going to just do it right. In the meantime, if you are online and you're seeing this and that you feel like asking questions, please ask away. Actually, while I'm at it, let me tweet it just in case if anybody wants to join. Both with this one. Okay, I did that. Um, so, for reference, 
I'll show you the one that I actually soldered. This is one I, I soldered earlier, and as I say, I soldered it wrong because this line over here, this one is pin number one, um, and it should go this way because that's the spot for pin number one. I got it wrong. Now this false fly. Oh, and I can turn the dense power off. I'm sure there are plenty of reasons why I should not be doing this live and taking questions in the meantime, but I'm going to do it anyway. Ceramic tweezers and the small black on no but I unplugged the 12 volt uh, yeah 12 volt power supply earlier so let me unplug this one I have to say I do like the PS100 because it's very fast to get to temperature and has a very thin tip so that part works This is the temperature. Let me grab a new one. So now I know that that one goes over there. Down there, the way I put it. way than I did earlier. I'm going to solder all the things first. There we go. If we hear a fan going off, it's probably the Dyson. Okay. It's possibly not my best soldering job, but it should do. Now it's going to work. Otherwise, the next one is completely out of line. Okay, I'm going to tell you that this is going to look terrible, but this one should be working.
Also, if you hear me yelp more, this time is just this holding item. I just realized I soldered all eight, I only needed six out of the eight soldered because two of them are NCs, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, this one looks like a good joint. What's the DPS for the joints? But it will do for what I need. I want to solder the pin for my shot. I'm sure this will be more entertaining with um, the actual camera on, which is probably why nobody is around. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't really want to. Like, my soldering technique is non existent. Okay, I'm sorted. Okay, looks good. Let's give it a moment to... Okay. And now I can reconnect this one to the breadboard. I said earlier, the 1 to 4 are on the lower side of a breadboard for me, which is the low side. Huh. Okay, and this should go to number 1, I think. What was the pin for that one? LXT is one. Then two is enabled, which I will probably have to set high for the moment. Now, be careful not to burn myself on the solder eye, which is probably still cooling. Yeah, okay, I have all high now. There we are. This part is working. Um, I just started the TIO and it backhoed whatever I sent it over, which is strange, but okay. Um, I don't know what it sent over. This is 68 on channel 1 and channel 2, but not on channel 0. What 
is interesting because channel two should be <coughs> Rx. I should not be seeing it as a So this time I started Tio. I see that zero XFF because of the connection open. I see a double echo. And again, this doesn't make sense because only half makes sense. I see it on my RX channel, but I shouldn't be seeing it on the RX channel. Um, I should only be seeing it in the And like, okay, so if I turn this, it should go into enable mode. So I want to see it either only on channel two or on all three. And instead, I'm seeing it on channel one and channel two, but not, not channel one. So channel uh, two, 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 lean and ground. So lean is the orange one. Yeah, that's fine. Which is currently as a full up. I do this. Lean is still pulled up. Oh, now it works. I guess that I was pulling it up too much. Okay, so that's fine. So this sends 68 and that's fine. And the important part of this sending 68, as I was saying the other time, is like this means that it can send at the minimum because this thing over here, uh, if I make this T0, ah, that's not actually let me do that while it's live. But this thing is like, this is plus 25, this is plus 65, like this is more than 25 milliseconds, so it doesn't have a time allocation. Also, this works. So that part is fine, now I'm going to unplug the 12 volts. I'm going to stop this for a moment. And before I do anything else, I'm going to open the, the analysis. So, open capture. And I should have first startup connected. I think this is the right one. Let me see. Yes. So this part over here is random noise. This one is the command. So let me add an analyzer here. One, why is it zero percent now? Um, edit, let's see, serial, there we go. Very good. So, this 94 followed by all zeros and then the um, checksum is probably like a feature inquiry or something like that. And um, that's a response from the HVAC and that tells the panel which features are or are not available. So, let me try how that works. The way I'm going to do this is, uh, sorry, folding, there we are. Here, it will print the buffer, but in addition to printing the buffer, if the buffer is equal 94 and it's followed by four zeros, yeah. 
repeat that, the message is going to be D1, 21, D2, followed by two zeros, else the message is going to be exactly the same. I let it calculate the checksum so I don't have to worry about what the right checksum. And then I'm going to keep going with the same. And I expect it to read back the same six bytes and assume that they are the same. So now, I'm going to start the emulator. I'm going to plug in the control panel onto the breadboard here. And I'm going to give it 12 volts again. No, let me go. And I was not listening on what was going on, so that was probably a mistake. Let me redo that. Because this thing has not printed anything either, so sounds like something may have been wrong. Let's go back to analyzing. Control panel is on. Ah, it's not actually receiving anything now. This may be interesting. So if I remove that on the enable side, The transceiver is not actually transceiving. And this is the serial receive that I expected to duplicate the same thing as above. But instead, it's just dropping down. Okay, so there are a couple of things that can be. Um, I can neither have, again, made a mistake on the folder inside. I may have made a mistake in the wiring of this thing as well, the serial port thingy. But my LX line, which I think should be pulled high, so this one should pull high the LX line. Yeah, if I pull up the LX line, like nothing actually, should it be pulled low? Holding. Actually, let me remove the orange cable from here. If I remove the orange cable, do I see the same thing? No, I don't. I still don't see anything. If I keep it pulled up, this is not good. Why is it hovering over three point five? Is 
it's interesting that it's hovering over 3.5 volts because I don't know what may be hovering over 3.5 volts. Let me remove this side altogether now. So if I do this, aha! Now channel 1 is moving the way I expected to ish because you see all of these dips like it has a strange frequency like it's decoding it right but it's yeah it's very finicky about things so I guess this one if I were to Yellow one, I think it's the three point three volt. Yes. So if I set a pull up on this thing, does it work right? No. And yet this thing should be doing a pull up. Ah, let's see again the typical application. The typical application has a I need a follower mode in this case, follower mode. So the MCU without pull up will need a VDDIO on the RXT and then the controller on the TXT. I sure don't need any of that. It does say EN, so maybe EN needs to be on always. It sends the signal, but it goes high immediately. And if I don't do that, yeah, I get the right thing that is, like, you get, actually, no, I don't. I need zero x 55 instead of, oh, yeah, it feels very random. So something is definitely odd with this thing. Let me pull it. No, well, let me power off the thing. I'll pull this out. I'll beep it again. Maybe I beeped some strange folders. Let me beep this out then. What's pin 5? Because I think I just lost pin 5 altogether. Yeah, I definitely lost pin 5. Um, I have to say the, the text that's in from my data sheets are annoying because you keep jumping between the, the yeah, I lost ground. That may explain why things are not working very well. Like the ground pin just came out. Let me try to resolder my ground pin better. Um, because well. By the way, have you all read about miracles today? If you haven't, M1 records, uh, miracles, please do take a look. This.
waiting for the oh there you go wait I, I ow um I forget sometimes how fast the PS one hundred goes. Okay, let me still sound these over. For those who connected now and don't know what I'm doing, I managed to screw up a little bit my original soldering. Still seem to be able to man no no add contact does not carry human contact because I'm using an adapter a breadboard adapter let's see if this one works is there Can you hear me better now? I may have been muttering good. Uh, I may have been muttering to myself a bit earlier, but indeed there is something still low, okay. And now be this should be to do, do, do okay so i do have some trouble here with the inputs let's see if this one actually helps and i raised it a lot more than i usually would keep it So, uh, uh, sorry about that, um, I do need to debug this a little better tomorrow. As I said, the, the trying to update to Windows 21H1 seems to have screwed up a little bit the audio and I keep getting things appearing and disappearing. So yeah, let's try again now that I solder the ground back to normal. Oh. Go back to analyzing. Wrong window, wrong window. This right window. Okay. And the answer is nope. Something is still not right. This should show up on the underside, on the low side of things. And it is not. And if I am to, oh, actually, sorry, but maybe the case because I don't have a pull up. So let's see if I add the pull up, what happens? Still nothing. It sees the pull up, but it's still fairly wrong. Yeah, 15 millivolts, minus 15 millivolts. So that sounds like something is clearly screwed up. If I enable this,
Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so what's going on today? This one is zero. Like you, you can see here me just randomly touching stuff. Like this is just me touching it with my finger. Um, what's this one right now? This is a very stable, not quite 12 volts. Yeah, 10, 10, 20, 10 to 59, that's normal. This thing. The chip is not hot. The ground should be ground. If I connect it to ground, you should see a very clear zero signal, and I do. If I connect it here, it should stay zero because there is no pull up. But if I connect a pull up resistor to that thing, I should see the actual signal. And they don't. Actually, this is pretty bad because right now I should be seeing a 3.3 volts on this thing. Which if I do put here, I see a 3.3 volts. So this feels like it's been pulled down. Uh, I don't think that link will work either. I wonder why though. I am checking the adapter for possible shorts. Don't look like I have any. That looks fine to me right now. Let me sound it just in case. Uh, and if this one doesn't beep, like if it was like if the beeping doesn't work right, it's one thing, but like this in. Oh, ouch, ouch. Plug it in. No, it seems to be fine. Oh. 
Okay, I may have pin 8 and 7 being shorted. But 8 is not connected, so This is interesting because No, they're not. None of these are short. So we should be working fine. I don't understand why it's not working. So let's try again. Five is ground, which is here. Connect this to this one, which is pulled up now. And it goes low and it stays low. And if I remove this one, And they put a uh, twenty twenty one. So the good thing is that if this like if the twenty twenty one works and the Tilin doesn't. Beside me being a bit annoyed, I have ways around it. I still have some random stuff going on channel two. Which is pin four, which is TXT. Which is fine because it's not connected to anything, so that kind of makes sense. Um, so if I stop this, this is actually sending the right signal. So this is on the MCP2021, which is the one with an additional 3 volts regulator. So this one works fine. Now the question is, did I screw up the soldering or did I burn the... Uh, these are automotive, I should not burn even if I manage to mess it up a little bit. It may be browning out or, or something. It looks like clean joints to me. A bit messy, but clean. So we'll have to try that again. Now let me see if I remove this thing over here, I'll add this one over here. This is actually getting the data in because this has the included pullout. I'm going to add that to the PN or transmit enable. And this one of a TXT and to unpower this. Now power this up. Now the panel is sending the right data. Okay, let me stop this, turn this off again. Don't care about the analog right now. I will have to try again with the other thing. The Q, I don't need this one, I want the EMU running and power on. Okay, now it's transmitting. 
and the panel did indeed send two times the 94 thing and got the reply. Oh, I may have sent the wrong reply. Did I send the wrong reply? I did send the wrong reply. Or did I not? Yes, it did. I sent that 8826 instead of. Yeah, I sent the normal one instead of the one I wanted to send. Why? I printed the buffer and the buffer was... Oh, because I kept the checksum. Huh. Okay, that's why. Close the EM, EMU, restart the EMU. And, um, and restart also the... And now I send the right thing. So now if I turn this on the control panel, set to outdoor 18, which is unexpected because it turns on on 91 on this one. And indeed, it doesn't let me set the um, power speed to the sorry the, the fan speed to power, which it did before. If I go into sub function, the plasma option is there, the resistor option is there, but there is no more. Um, what was the other? The, one of the features is no longer there. Um, So that does tell it what the options are. Um, if I go into sub uh, special functions, I no longer have the in control. So this is getting better. Now I'm going to turn this off again for a moment. I'm going to stop this as well. So if I go to here, sorry folks, here now I'm like checking the buffer, if it is the query function, I'm sending this D121E2. Now, I assume that D1 is going to be the packet type of some kind. Oh. And so 21 is likely going, 21 and E2 are likely going to be feature flags. So I'm going to comment this one, and instead I'm going to send a message that says D1 Zero one issue. Now we going to restart the emulator. Going to resume the analyzer just in case. We sent a different set of fields. I'm turning this on. Still set to 40, um, 18 external current time. The fan speed can be set to power. So that two there seems to be a, some kind of flag about what fan speeds are available. If I go into mode sub, um, sub function, I still don't have the thing and I don't and I do have the in control now. So that is the type of thing. I didn't have the in control with that two there. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave myself a note at this point. So buffer one and zero x to zero is present and control and power speed is it. So now what happens if I send to zero instead? So I'm going to close this again, restart it, and I'm going to reboot the panel. So it queried the thing. And if 
span speed cannot be set. Step function is fine. Special function doesn't have any control. Okay, so this is interesting. And do I have anything else? Room temperature, timer mode, everything else seems to be exactly the same. Oh, no. Ha! If I send to zero, I don't have heating mode. So, upper one and... So without that, there is no heat pump mode. Okay, that's good. So if I send but still the same, but I send E0, what is it going to do? Let's try. Also, it may be worth noting that when this sends 94, 94, 94, when it is 1fx4, is that always the same? No, look at this one is different. So what it sends as the default configuration seems to be different depending on the initialization. So if I turn this on, um, Fan speed is still the same. Mode select now has heating again. Sub function still doesn't have anything else. I'm telling this to send like 30 degrees. There's no heat humidifier. Uh, room temperature is 26. Now if I turn this off... See, it's room temperature is 27. I turn this off. Did it change anything to tell that the temperature is now 27? Ah, uh, it might. Might be that thing over there. Okay, so... Let's try something slightly different for a moment. So, import construct, and I'm going to open a new window you're not going to see, sorry, because I'm going to check the high level analyzer when I wrote the, the part that I already wrote. And then I'm going to use my previous code for glucometer utils that deals with checksums to essentially do the same. Glucometer utils drivers, I think the one I want to do is the TT42 that has the checksum in it. So, um, HVAC packet. Actually, I'm going to call this HVAC control because that's the default thingy that, like, I know that that's the one that it's actually always sending. It's going to be construct.struct. Going to be needing a row copy of the data because I need it for the checksum.
and I don't know anything but the no, I do know the first nibble, so it's going to be the zero x zero seven. So the the highest nibble is always zero in this case. So this is going to be a construct bit struct. It's going to be a bit struct. I don't like bit structs. Let me let me be honest. And the reason why I don't like them is because I need to remember the order of how I'm going to put it. So, okay, 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 okay. It's integer, okay. Actually, flag the first one. So the first is going to be config is going to be construct flag. Then it's going to be a mapping. of the mode is going to be a um, constructed mapping constructed bit integer bits integer sorry see and the mapping is going to be And this is going to be the modes so import anum anum unique class mode anum anum to ph Actually, no, this is just zero and one and one. Actually, I don't know if auto is correct at zero x three, to be honest, but that's how it's listed in a few places. I don't think that's ever going to come out. So that's a mode. Uh, and then the next bit is going to be resistor heating, I think. I don't think it's I, it's something I couldn't figure out what that icon was meant to be. And then running is another frog and then do I know what zero x2 is no one is constructed flag I don't think I know what the unknown one is and then it's going to be construct Sorry, unknown one, and the next one is settings change. And that's the first byte. The second byte, I still have no idea what it is. This is unknown to construct dot its integer eight, because I don't know what it is. And then Packet data two, uh, one. No, that's one. Two then. Yeah. Plasma mode. So plasma is equal to construct of flag. And then it's going to be. Oh, it's fun speed now. So. And on unique, 
you can obtain phantom. And the phantom speed is low, medium, high, and power. There is no 0x03 in this case, um, because it's somehow a set of bit flags. I guess it optimizes something on their side, I don't know. Uh, so that one is fun speed. Fun speed is equal construct mapping, not construct it's integer free a, a value for e in fun speed. Okay. And then I have a nibble of the temperature. But it is also offset, so I need to remember how to tell this hey by the way this thing is slightly different. I don't think I have one. It's not a const, it's not an index, it's, technically it is computed, right? It's not pickled, it's not numpy, it's not name double, it's not a timestamp, it's not a hex or a hex dump. Totally streaming data equivalence, uh, data equivalence maybe? Nah, no, doesn't matter. Okay, row temperature is going to be constructed nibble and actual temperature. And it's going to be computed. Construct dot this dot row temperature plus sixteen because that should do the right thing there. Packet data three. I only know the swivel, which is zero x twenty. So unknown. The construct of bits integer eight four two, um, and then swivel construct of bits in uh, flag. Sorry, and then unknown four construct of bits in nibble. What is this? Oh no, actually it's bits integer five. I don't know any of those fives at this point. And then unknown five is construct of bits integer seven. Because I only know on the four this word, whatever this word is. Um, which is this word. So that's the construct struct data row copy. Now I need the checksum. So the checksum is construct checksum. Construct of byte. And that is actually going to be B. No, sorry, not B. Um, I'll put a checksum and it's going to be construct of this data data. And I know that sounds ridiculous because it kind of is, but that's the right thing to do there. Oh, I need a comma here. There you go. So this should allow me to parse the HVAC control message and here so parsed is this dot parse buffer 
speed powers. And this one, no, it's not needed because it, if the checksum is invalid, it will error out on the parse. So I'm going to run this and see what it's going to do. Oh, it's going to explode because the first one is. I'm just going to say that this is messed up because it's 0x94, so everything else doesn't make any sense. But the other is fine, so it says that the actual temperature is 18 configured. It's not the if that's the temperature configured, it's not the temperature, but it's reading from the room. Um, it's in cool mode. The resistor heating is set to false. It's not running. And unknown two is 30. So that is awesome. The problem with this is it doesn't tell me what is changing when I change something. Because it's just going to repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again. That is not particularly useful. But it kind of works. So I'm going to stop this for a moment again. I'm going to turn the thing off. Now, this is a bit struck. The first thing that it says is config is a construct flag. Everything else depends on the construct flag because I don't know what the rest is. Oh, this noise, if you hear it, I don't know if you hear the hissing sound, but it's just my bench power supply. Um, so I need this to be conditional. And the reason for that is because I don't know what the rest of the structure is when that is but when it's a config rather than the actual um, settings. So if you see here config is false except for the 0x94 at the beginning which is going to be a lot the number it prints once every second. Yeah so this one config is equal to Everything else, I don't know, because it depends on what config. So, no, it's not the union. So, I want the construct.if then else. So, construct um, if then else. Okay, the rest is going to be command if then else uh, construct dot if then else and the if is going to be construct dot this dot data dot config and if the then is going to be construct dot is going to be not command big how do I want to call this details um, if it is config details is going to be construct dot bit struct uh, sorry bits integer seven plus um, eight times four Otherwise, it's going to be a structure, sorry, bit structure of all of this thing over here. Okay, this should work. That's it. No, it explodes because data is not found. Uh, where is it not found though?
Oh, because this is only just piece of config, not piece of data. Let's try again. Better. Error in path parsing, data details unknown file. Because it expected seven and found one. I feel that the bit struct var is not working right, and probably the bit struct is parsed, is misparsed. Like it's the first one, it just errors out. Okay, let me not do it this way. I need to actually test this pretty much. The problem is that if config is Ah, this is going to be annoying. Okay, so for this one I'll need quite a bit more work. In particular, I need fear that what's going to be needed here is A, I need to figure out why the tilling didn't work for me and I may need to solve their third one. Um, yeah, so I will desolder one, solder in a third one, see how that works. Um, I need to try this without the external power supply if I can avoid it because I don't want to keep connecting and disconnecting the control panel. The other thing I need to do is take some of the packets that I already know how they work and use this construct here to just recompute them. I'm going to do that maybe now for like 10 minutes um, just so we have something done. Yeah, I feel like I'm fighting with Matt today. This is actually not going anywhere as close to what I wanted. Like I, I was really hoping that the tilling will just work out of the box. The tilling doesn't work, I need to find another one that works fine. I'm like that's going to be annoying. Very annoying. Um it may be that it's just browning out, so I need to make sure I have all of the capacitors in once as well. But for now, I guess I keep going with this one because at least this one works. Um, so let's ignore that thing over here. Let's keep this stuff simpler. Uh, I'll remove this shoe. It's no longer details. Uh, there we go. So this is going to do the raw calculation of everything. And this does the processing. 
let me wrap this into a class for a moment. So this is going to be class h any, and it's going to have the last bracket. I'm going to pull it by and just set it to empty. Uh, and then I'm going to do is going to be port and did it get other path? Oh I can Oh but it won't as a string anyway, so I'm not going to do it. I was going to say the new click supports getting back natively as um as a path, but I don't need that as a path right now. Part is going to be a string. So I'm going to let's try this here. Um, so this is going to be my serial. It always needs to be initialized. So yeah, port, load rate, and timeout. All of those are fine. This is the loop. I'm going to do this. Stuff at serial then here, and this is going to be stuff at process, and this will be process here. This doesn't need the bus serial anymore. This is just going to be itself. Um, so this one doesn't need this process but buffer. Otherwise, reset it to empty. Um, and this one is going to take self buffer. Yes, um, self and it checks flat buffer. And I am going to. to, to, to well, okay. first of all, this becomes self dot serial right. And then this is the same six because I just want to. Make sure that it prints it out. Um, this I'm going to reconstruct later, and now this part over here is going to be um, ammo h by ammo serial port, and it's going to be ammo loop. So this part over here can go away. I'm not going to print the parser all the time. I'm going to do if the buffer is different self dot last bucket. I'm going to parse it and print it. And then I'm going to do self dot last bucket equal buffer. That way it will only print if I actually have received something new. So if nothing changes, it doesn't print. Um, And it should send me like this should do everything one after the other. The other thing I wanted to do from this, and I'll do that later maybe, is um, a delta. Um, but I want a side by side, which I don't think the flip has. Python side by side diff. Yeah, I want a proper like side by side. Why if maybe? Yeah, something like this. I want this part over here. I want a side by side. Very good. This dash dash y. That's the one I want. And the reason why I want why if is this just a command or it's the library though? It's a tool to view colored incremental leaf. I want to generate side by side. This one side by side diff for Python. Uh, how does this use it? A 
example, what does it do for this? This generates... Oh, don't tell me this is actually generating a HTML file? Oh, come on, seriously? Like with the whole bomb and everything? Don't. Ah, side by side, text, diff. Um, Maybe why diff has no it doesn't does it no. This is a proper tool. Okay, so that's going to be for later. I will I would have liked to have a side by side diff thing so that it will tell me what change packet in packet out. But for now this should do fine. So let's start it. So that's the request for information, the inquiry. This is the current default, and it start with 001D. What did what did change? This unknown went from 29 to 30. That's the only thing that changed. Um, row temperature it says 18. Now here's the thing: it's not 18. It's clearly 25 right now. So let me just close the window. And this should bring the temperature in the room fairly quickly as well. Because like it's slightly over 25. Um, I could turn on the I don't know the soldering iron to just make it warmer, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to to bring the lamp a little closer, and that one should also make it go a little warmer. The reason why I'm doing this is because that 29 to 30, well, I haven't touched the device. But it is very well possible that the device now is registering a slightly higher temperature, and it is possible that the 29 to 30 that I've seen, um, which is about 0x1d becoming 0x1e, um, is actually the temperature. Now, let me grab. Do, 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 I, do I have my. I'm not going to grab that, I'm going to grab the calculator on Windows. No. It doesn't actually start the calculator. Do I have a calculator on Windows? I don't have a calculator on Windows. Um, okay, so I need my physical calculator. Just give me a second to find it. As I said already probably a couple of times, I do like having a normal calculator, like a physical calculator with me for these things. Maybe because I, like, I don't know, it, it makes my head reason a little better, kind of like the same way it still takes notes on paper a lot of times. So, 1E. But is indeed 30. This thing says 25, so it will be 5 um, degrees of difference. I don't think that's just the temperature, though. Oops. I'm trying to see if this thing can actually notice that I'm putting it close to something, it's relatively hot with the LEDs and stuff. It doesn't seem... Okay, now it says 26. Did it change? Yes, it says 31, 32 now. So that appears to be the temperature, the current reading of the temperature. Now it's 33. Yeah, it's going up. It still says 26 on this thing, though. So that's interesting because the display may actually be um, delayed compared to what it's recording.
27. 35. But may actually be like going up two units, 36, 28. So that unknown two is definitely temperature or at least connected to a temperature. Thirty-seven. This still says twenty-eight. Now it says twenty-nine, and that went to thirty-eight. I think this side over here is where the temperature is. Now I'm going to put it back down. This should go back down 39. This still says 29. Um, I should probably write this down, right? I have some paper. So 2939. Twenty nine thirty nine, but still thirty nine. Ten. Now say it's twenty uh, thirty eight, so it's going down, but still says twenty nine. So this unknown two here, it's a row, a row representation of the temperature. Not the set temperature, but the temperature read by the sensor inside the panel. Which means I can actually use that. Like, at the very least, I can start by sniffing these panels with a custom board and just use them as additional temperature sensors throughout the, 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 the three rooms where we have it. We'll have three more temp um, temperature sensor thermometers throughout the thing. That's handy. Um, so while this thing goes and keeps doing its things, let me name this one with like row set temperature and actual set temperature. This is row set temperature. Um, and that unknown two, which is this eight bits integer here. So I have the feeling that either either this is in half um, half by half degrees, because I think when e which is 30, well, 26. And 38. So that went up, was it 1D as well? 36, I think it may have been 1D. Let me see, there you go. It was 1D and it was still 26, I think, which is 29. Um, so if I assume that 30 is 26, sorry, 29 is 26 and 30 is 26 and a half. Um, that will mean that 38 will be 26 and a half. So 31 will become 27 and a half. 32 will be 28 and a half. And 33 will be 29 and a half. So it's not in halves. It's not going up by halves. The screen now says 27, and this is reading 34. Yeah, 
if we assume that this is still in nibbles, because the roll temperature on the other one is plus 16, um, If we assume it that way, um, 0x1d is 30, but if, it's, if we just get the 0x0d, um, that's 13. And that will be, let's call it 26, which turns out to be exactly the same. Yeah, of course, that's going to be minus 16. Oh, sorry, the x1d is not 30, it's um, 29. So, yeah, that's minus 16. So, if we do that, um, 49 minus 16 is. 23. So now it says 33 and that thing is 26. So was I wrong about that and it was like 25 on the display instead of 26? If I'm right that this one is 23, 22, and it will correspond to 29. Because 39 in Decimal is 20. Oh no, it's 27 in hex. So it's definitely not just. It's definitely not just one nibble. It's not just four bits because otherwise, like, it wouldn't be getting those numbers all the way. Right now, the unknown is set to 33. And the display reads 26. But it's clearly related to the temperature of the the, the internal representative um, what is it going to be? Now it's at 33 and that's 26. So if I now open the window again. This should go much further down. Okay, not that much further down because it's not that close. But if that goes down to 25, I should see the unknown shoe going further down. So that bite is definitely related to the temperature. At first I thought it was temperature plus 10. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Right now it looks like it's more like temperature plus 8, but also I know that that's not the case. And I know that these don't have a full range, so it doesn't make sense for it to start at 0. I do think that it goes up by 2, but the, the, by the value of 2 for each actual degree it registers.
This is where I'm going to go and just start freezing and warming and freezing and warming the thing. At least I know which side of the sensor the, the thing is. I may be able to bring it down to 10 degrees or something. There you go, it's been down 32 now. Still says 26 on the thing. So if this now goes down to 31 and but pink shows 25, I know that I'm on the right step of um, the values is in half, like half degree steps. Then it's just going to be a matter of figuring out the range. Ah, just like looking paints dry, as we say. Um, still nothing. Thing still says twenty five. Sorry, it still says 26. Before I confuse myself, I rewatch this later. See, now I wish I actually put the camera on because I could have put the camera. Uh, just that it's very difficult to actually see the thing, but I would have put the camera on the temperature and then I would have just actually I can do that and just leave the stream go like hey just observe this. I may not do that, but I may record it. Um, what I can definitely do is just set up Streamlabs and instead of streaming it to Twitch, just have it recorded and record the temperature as it moves and what values it gets. But to be honest, at this point, it seems like 26 will be represented by, what did we say here, 32. Um, so if 26 is 32 um, and 29 and a half, let's call it that, is 39, um, but puts exactly 3.5 degrees between the two of them, because it's 26. 29 and a half, and there are exactly seven units between the two. So, but oh, there you go. That says 31, and the screen says 25. So, that's the temperature. So, it's in half degrees somehow. So, this unknown to here, which is a, a full byte, is actually. Row room temperature construct dot bit um, byte because it's eight bits and actual room temperature going to be construct dot cons computed construct dot this dot row room temperature divided by two. plus something because it's an offset so i know that the 29 is going to be 39 and the 26 is going to be um 32 
it's actually still is it 16? No, it's plus 10. So what is plus 10 somehow? Should be this way. So if I terminate these uh, construct, not construct, construct. Let's see the buffer reference before assignment. Do, 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 do. Buffer, 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 if not. So, um, spin uh, that data as well. Okay, maybe instead of byte here, I want bits integer 8. Let me turn this off for a moment. What do you mean, that's one specified amount? Oh, sorry, unknown should need to go away now. Clear. And there we go. Yes, actual room temperature 25.0. So that part is fine. Now it's going higher, 25.5. And I think that right now it missed the thing, so now I'm turning this on. Now it's mode pool. It's running because I turned it on and I told it to go to 18 degrees. That's the set temperature. And no one is false, change is false because it changed true and then it went to false. If I now raise this temperature here, Tell it to go to 26. The actual set temperature here is now 26. Um, it changed here, now it's stable here. And the, the room temperature is still 25 and a half. It says 26. Oh, 26 is what I said too. So if I click room temperature, it goes 25, which is exactly what I want. And the set temperature is the, I'm using a room temperature and set temperature because that's what the panel actually calls it. Um, but because we started, yeah, because we started on speed power, because it, it started without me actually being there. So if I now reset this, uh, if I now reset this. Yeah, it goes 94 to vary for the stuff, and now still 25. I turn it on, it's set to 18. There is an outdoor thing that turns on when I turn it on. I don't know, it's probably outdoor unit or something. Um, and if I try to change the fan speed, it goes like high, low instead of high power low. So yeah, this looks like we are getting somewhere. Um, I don't know if unknown four and five um, are ever changing. If I go to sub function and turn this, it's just going to change the plasma mode. Yeah. Um, if I go to special functions and do a text run, this row set temperature zero, and it sets actual room temperature to forty. I assume that those are the two maximum things. And this disable plasma set the fan speed to high 
swivel to true because yes, I do see the swivel bar. And the rest, a non 4 is 8 and a non 5 is 0, which is the opposite of usual. I have no idea what everything else is. I can only turn it off from there. Which just running false, everything is turned off. Um, I have an ESP setting here and that one crashed because yeah, it was trying to hear or something. Yeah, because it was sending probably a command. But anyway, I think for tonight, this is going to be plenty. Um, I need to do that side by side diff so I can show you what changed. Because that's that is actually really important. Um, I want to be able to click the button and see which flag changes. Um, I also want to explicitly ignore when that what changes. <sighs> yeah, that's going to be a mess. But for now, it's fine. I think I'll call it today like two hours of stream. I wanted to do just one, so <laughs> that's fun. Uh, yeah, there is no camera, so I click on not have to go back to this one. Um, yeah, folks, uh, see you next time. That's where we're going to be for now. Bye.